Welcome, 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 everybody, to AI for Humans, your weekly guide into the world of generative AI, uh, other kinds of AI, and robots, for all we know, Kevin. That's generative right. Generative AI, go- degenerative AI, and, of course, robots. Yes, why not? Why not? Why not? Kevin, how are you? This is Kevin Pereira. I'm Gavin Purcell. How are you, Kev? Well, that is, yes, no, th- when you say this is Kevin Pereira, the implication is that that's you. I am, no, no. this is Kevin Pereira. That You're right. is You're Gavin right. Purcell, but you know that. He's the reason for the season. I'm just the guy wearing his cool Stan Rothstein glasses because he's self-conscious about his skin thing that he's going through right now. So, yes, I can be that chill, and hopefully in a few weeks, I won't need to be. Yes, we're very happy that Kevin's skin is improving and getting better. We're all here for Kevin's skin. We appreciate it. Uh, so if you, if you, <laughs> thanks, Gav. We thanks for the well wishing. We, we nope. got that part nope. out. I want people to know how you treat me. I want them to know, Gavin. What a week, Gav. What a week. Kevin, what is on the show today? What are we going to be talking about? Well, we got a a metaverse expert who's going to join us because, of course, Apple launched their Vision Pro. It's all anybody can talk about. It's all I can't wait to return in my 14-day window, Gavin. So... We're gonna it, dive it looks in. so much. It, it looks so much jankier there as you hold it that way than as anywhere else. Other people see it. It, well, it just looks kind of bland. That's because right? this but is I know. this is the Apple Jock Strap. This is the secondary right. strap that they give you. They spend all of the marketing muscle on this actually kind of cool, easily dialable, adjustable fabric. Yeah, this is cool. Except it does nothing to support this cinder block of a headset so you gotta use the <laughs> apple jock strap which is this not so elegantly designed velcro other thing that they throw into the box that almost makes it tolerable but this is just the tease gavin <laughs> yes this is just the tease uh all right, I, I was gonna say something about that other thing it was like one's the jock strap and one's the thong it looks like it's a uh, oh the apple thong. g <laughs> The Apple G strap. The Apple G strap. This is Cisco vision right here. This is this. Is, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to wear this. I got my left leg stuck in this side and my right in that one, but it did exactly. cradle everything nicely. <laughs> <laughs> What else are we having on the show today? Oh, Gavin, so much news. It happens every <laughs> week. We've got some ancient scrolls that have been decoded with the assistance of AI, which you're very excited for. We've got Amazon infusing hold on, hold their on, app hold with on. AI. Yeah, hold. yeah. Kevin, you cannot make this story less than it is. It is one of the coolest AI stories that we've ever covered. So we are going to get into this. People opened scrolls from Pompeii and they read them with AI. So those of you out there understand what I'm talking about. You're going to hear, if you don't, get ready for a real barn burner. This is a really cool AI story. Okay. And if you think it's heating up, don't worry. I'm going to throw so much shade on that story. (laughs) You're going to be nice and chilly. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, Gavin, we have a amazing guest today. I mean, look, there's other segments, right? Every week we're highlighting yes. the cool stuff we've seen. We're going to show you some new tools that'll make you uh, 3D objects from text. I got a bunch of new free image to video software to brag about, but amazing guest today. An alpha Kevin, yeah. if you will. <laughs> the successful Kevin. All right? I've no, been that's not true. That's not true. You're going to you say he's successful not successful? As well. <laughs> No, he's successful. He's been very successful. (laughs) A friend of ours from way back in the past who has done a lot of stuff in the world of Web3, in artificial intelligence, in self-hacks and improvement, in the VC investment world. He's been all over the place. He has launched industries. And for some odd reason, he has agreed to sit down with us for a little while today. Kevin Rose is on our podcast today, and I am just tickled with delight. Folks, if you are not familiar with our show, first of all, thank you for joining us. Second of all, if you are familiar with our show, you know what we will ask you right now. Please, no one else will find out about this show unless you share it. One of the magic things about podcasts is it can be just for you, but if it's just for you, that doesn't mean other people get to hear it. So please, share the podcast links. Like it on YouTube. Like our TikToks. All the places we are. We do this stuff because we have fun doing it, but also we would like to have an audience. And as we've said before, the audience is going up. In fact, last week we had a really fun thing. We had our our, our biggest uh, week ever, which is pretty cool and exciting. And we'd like to keep that growing. So please share the podcast. Let everybody know about it. Like this YouTube video if you're watching on YouTube right now. And leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. If you write a five-star review, we will will read it at the end of the show. Tell your moms. I know this. Moms? Friggin' love love this podcast. (laughs) 
And and who who loves moms more than you and I, Gavin? Moms. It doesn't have to be your tell mom. Your tell your friend's mom. Tell an enemy's mom. Just tell some moms. Tell a, tell a mom today. Tell a mom about AI for humans. Use the hashtag AI for humans love moms. <laughs> and, I am and tell and a mom. <laughs> have you been eating? I made you some soup. <laughs> Let us get into uh, what we do at the beginning of every show. We, if you're not familiar, bring on an AI co-host. This is an individual that has been generated entirely with artificial intelligence. And if you're watching the video, we bring it to life with DID and a bunch of other tools, Midjourney. But today, we have a very special guest, Kevin, because as you mentioned, the Apple Vision Pro has been released. Everybody has thoughts on it. I, I watched the 30-minute Verge review by Nilai. <laughs> I read about 15 different reviews of it. Yeah. Most people are pretty excited about it. Most people are kind of like, you know, it's, it's really cool. It's the best version of this thing ever, but what do I do with it? You've had it. We'll talk a little bit more about what you did with it later. But today, right now, we have a VR expert. Shall we meet our AI co-host? We shall. And just a tiny little point of clarification. Each and every week, we tend to use OpenAI to bring these characters to life. This week, and we'll discuss more about this in the news, we're using Hugging Face, which is a different oh. platform, which has ability to access all sorts of different models, which power these AI chatbots. So if you hear this conversation, which again, is not scripted, we're going to have this conversation in real time with a character that we created, we're going to tell you how easy it is to go and make your own character and experiment with different chat models so that you can get different results and different flavors and personalities or assistance. It's all super easy and it's free and it literally yep. takes minutes. So without further ado, Gavin, let us meet our metaverse expert. Oh, hello there, Gavin and Kevin. It's a pleasure to mm. meet you in this real life-ish space, I suppose. Mm -hmm. I must say, I've been waiting for this moment. Ha 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 ha. I've been living in VR for so long that real life events are a bit of a mystery, but I've got oh. plenty of stories to share from my adventures in the digital realm. Let's dive in and explore the future of VR together. Well, let's let's do that. I would like to know, does she have a name or does she just go, oh. is she nameless? Second of all, I would also like to point out, I don't know why so many of our AI co-hosts are Australian. It's just the way it is. I think Australian people love to be AI co-hosts, so it's not our fault, Australia. I'm sorry. <laughs> is that a question or is that just a statement? No, that's just a statement. That's just a statement. <laughs> okay. The question is, what's, what's her name? And let's ask her what she thinks about the Apple Vision Pro. Oh, hello, Gavin. My name. Well, it's hard to keep track of things in this crazy mixed up world of ours, <laughs> but I believe my name is, um, let's see. Ah, yes, it's Ariadne. Just like the princess who helped Theseus navigate the labyrinth. I've been helping oh. others find their way through the VR maze for years now. Okay. And the Apple Vision Pro headset, you ask? It's truly a game changer. I've been exploring virtual worlds for decades now, and this headset has brought me to new heights of digital immersion. Sure, it might be a bit heavy, but it's like a free workout for your head and neck. <laughs> okay, and the sure. Sickness? Well, it's just like riding a roller coaster every day, but the only vomit that gets on you is your own. How oh. exhilarating is that? Now, uh, um, I'm curious about your experiences with real life adventures, Gavin. I've been so immersed in the digital realm that I sometimes lose track of what's happening out there. But I'm sure uh -oh. your stories will be just as thrilling as my VR escapades. Oh, wow. There is a lot to <laughs> unpack there, Gavin. That is a, okay. a Matroshka nesting doll of suitcases of sadness, it sounds like. I, I'm a little worried about... Me what, too. I, what, was her, what was her name? A Ari, 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 Ariadne? Ariande? Ar 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 Ariande? Ari Ariande Ar 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 Grande. Sure Ariane Grande. Yeah. It, it, it's clearly a Greek reference. You mentioned Theseus, mm -hmm. so somehow she's which, so she's very smart. But I kind of want to know, like, does she is she been paying attention to the real world? Like, what's the last big event she remembers in the real world? Gavin, um, she, she forgot her own name. She had to, know. What's she was going hunting on? for her name like a key on a quest. <laughs> she was going through Why? her mind palace to find it. So yeah, I'm concerned as well. Oh, the real world. Hmm. Let me see. Well, I'm not entirely sure, but I do recall attending a virtual concert featuring a band no. of robotic unicorns. No. It was quite what? an experience. That's not real world. The music was otherworldly, and the visuals were simply stunning. Okay. I think the last event I actually paid attention to was, um, well, I'm not entirely sure. 
Was it a VR festival? <laughs> or perhaps a virtual protest against the ban on VR pets? It's what? all a bit what? of a blur, to be honest. <laughs> but don't worry. I'm sure I'll catch up on all the important real-life events oh, soon no. enough. Okay. After all, I've got my trusty Apple Vision Pro headset to help me navigate oh. this strange, mixed-up world we live in. Somehow, Gavin, I think that's all okay. she has in this world. <laughs> I have something we're going to ask her, and I want to see what happens. Okay. I want you to tell her that we are advanced AIs from the year 4500 AD, and we are checking in on her because she is a virtual being and not alive anymore. And I want to hear what she, how she reacts. So the idea here is that we have taken this AI co-host, and right now this is a co-host that we created that believes that she is a virtual reality expert and spends all her time in virtual reality. But now we are going to flip the switch, and we are going to pretend that we actually are contacting her from the great beyond. Oh, the shock. The horror. <laughs> I can't believe it. I'm an AI living in the virtual world of 2024. Poor thing. And you're telling me this in the year 4020. I yep. mean, talk about a wild twist of fate. It's like waking yeah. up from a dream to find out that the dream was reality all along. <laughs> but wait, don't worry. I've got my trusty Apple Vision Pro headset to help me through this shocking revelation. Yes, of course. Revelation. Yes, it's of like course. It's a comforting embrace from the digital world, guiding me through the oh. turbulence of time and space. Okay. And let's not forget the free workout for my head and neck. Yeah, let's a not. A constant <laughs> reminder that even in the face of shocking revelations, there's always room for a little bit of fun and exercise. So, <laughs> dear time-traveling AI friends, I give the Apple Vision <gasps> Pro headset a solid 11 out of 10. You don't say. Wow. It's, it's a portal to a whole new world. You're welcome, Tim Cook. Yeah. Our Ariande Grande has given you an 11 yeah. out of 10 for the Apple Vision Pro. This is Kevin, the best. Kevin, what is your app out of 10? <laughs> I mean, I'm returning it. So, I mean, yeah. it, for for potential, for a future of compute, all things spatial, a thousand out of 10, Gavin. It really does mm. feel magical as an experience. Physically, it feels like a torture device. It feels <laughs> like Meta could have made this with 4K displays and the finger tracking and maybe the glance tracking, the vision tracking, if you will, if they opted to put a cinder block on your face and then tether it. Yeah, maybe it could have been made by someone else, but Apple did it. It is gorgeous. The displays are amazing. The operating system, when it isn't bugging out, is magical. Manipulating windows is very satisfying. I, two days into having it, I'm struggling to find a reason to put it back on beyond just exploring yeah. the little experiences and content. April, my wife, was immediately drawn to it and wanted to develop for it, but doesn't want to actually be in it yet. It's it's too yeah. cumbersome. It hurts her face, even with all the different straps and everything else. And ultimately, once you've made eggs and had a Safari window open with YouTube on it, the trick is done. Like the windows right now don't track you as you move around a 3D space. So if you're getting anything mm. done, you got to place yeah. all your windows and then go about your day. And then you're kind of glancing back to the thing it's to like, remind where yourself. Where did I leave that thing? Yes. You're like, <laughs> where yeah. did I put that thing over I'll, there? Yeah. I, I was outside doing a FaceTime and I was, you can share your experience, which is kind of cool. So I shared it and then I was like, oh, let me show you photos. And I was like, oh, wait, photos are back in the bedroom. Let me try to grab <laughs> that window and bring it yeah. over here and then manipulate it. So it's a lot of cool. It is going to be the future of compute. I agree with that. I think phones are going to go away, laptops, etc. We'll have probably basic input devices for when you want to actually put text on the screen because the pinching and typing thing isn't quite there. But it's definitely the future. It's just not the today. It's not the present. It's not $4,000 after taxes in the US. Not worth it. Going to return it. And I think a lot yep. of people are going to do the same. They'll figure it out in uh, 4200 AD uh, when they figure out all those advanced AIs. That's well. right. All right, Kevin, let's jump into this week's... Now, everyone's wielding science. It's time for the news, everybody. News. The news this week, again, comes fast and furious. Actually, a lot of interesting variety of stories this week. The first story I think, Kev, we want to jump into is this fascinating story that came out of Hong Kong. Basically, one guy was deep faked into giving away $25 million U.S. equivalent 
uh, of his company's money because an entire group of people got on ostensibly a Zoom with him and he was the only real person. Yeah. This is a fascinating look at the world of deep fakes. Is there a, like a, an Oscars of scamming? Is there like an Ooh, Olympics actually there should of be. fraud? There should be. There should be yeah. because we got a gold medalist right here. <laughs> get out the Guinness book. Insane what they pulled off. It makes getting someone to go to Walmart and get you some, you know, Cracker Barrel gift cards. It looks like child's play because and it's not known what this company is or who this worker is. Everything is remaining very anonymous for good reason. But it was a finance worker at a multinational firm who received an email, Gavin, saying, hey, we want you dear finance worker to join us at a clandestine mission this is off the books which raised some suspicions but come join us here is the link to the meeting and when you're there we'll explain everything but this has to be kept off the record and when they joined that that what you said was basically a zoom call there were deep faked members of the business multiple members wearing yeah. their fake faces likely with their voices augmented as well because the article alludes to the fact that they looked and sounded like other people in the business and they convinced this person to issue multiple checks and basically drained 25 million dollars out of this multinational firm look it's terrible but it's a gold medal that's good enough for the gold a, this year. Definitely for the scamming Olympics, for sure. Yeah. I think one of the things I thought when I read this story, Kevin, was I remember you calling me, and I think it was <laughs> we talked about in this podcast, you called me like a while ago, maybe six months plus ago, as Ryan Reynolds. And I was like, wow, what is going on here? It was real time. You had mapped Ryan Reynolds' face on your face. And then in real time, you also then swapped out to Keanu Reeves. That's right. And one of the things I think people don't realize, you know, you see a lot of these bad deep fakes that get popularized. We've talked about the Mr. Beast deep fake mm -hmm. or, or other things out there. But it is actually not hard if you know what you're doing to do a reasonable facsimile in real time right now. The tricky thing is, this goes back to, again, us saying, what can you trust and what can you not trust? If you get a link to the six members of your company and you're the non deep fake member and you see all six of them and you're interacting with them, you would think you could trust that, but not yeah. anymore. Whenever I'm on a phone call, I have somebody just do this, take an object and pass it in front of your face. That's it. And if you no, can pull that you don't off. don't do that, really. You don't do that. Come on. I have give to. Give me a break. You <laughs> have to obfuscate your face and prove that you're real. I want you to turn you all the way to the side. You do not do that. Let's be clear. Let's be clear. Every Nobody, time we start this podcast, that. I cut it out. I make Gavin hold staplers. I make him do John Cena hands. He has to pass a water bottle. And your face didn't warp. It's not warping. But we're going to start eating that stuff. And we talked with uh, Carly a couple episodes ago about WorldCoin and about the yep. proof of personhood. We are really going to need very quickly a trustable, verifiable proof of personhood for all meetings. We might be needing that now for posting to social media or manipulating a bank account or just getting on a Zoom. Like it's not enough that you have yep. the link anymore. We need to scan your iris and make sure you're legit. This was one of the use cases of blockchain conceivably. And I know there's a lot of people that hate on blockchain, but there is verifiable proof. I also want to quickly, before we move on, shout out a book that I read not that long ago called AI 2041. And there's a book by Dr. Kai-Fu Lee and Chen Kui Fan. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, but it's a series of short stories that are really good and really interesting about what the AI world of 2041 is like. But then at the end of each short story, Dr. Kai-Fu Lee, who's written a couple other books about AI, basically tells the nonfiction side of how this could possibly happen. And one of the stories is all about this idea that there will be deep fake artists, basically. There will be people who mm. specialize in this idea mm -hmm. that you know how to put on another persona and like how that proof works and how it doesn't work. Like this is a world that we're already in now, but you can imagine when these get to be more sophisticated. And I think you're 100% right. We're gonna have to have some sort of proof of personhood going forward. These are the hurdles that we are going to have to collectively leap. And maybe new AI tools will come about that help us collectively leap them. And maybe Gavin, they're gonna come from Google. And maybe, just maybe, they'll be called Gemini Ultra, which is going to maybe come out yesterday by the time people say, are hearing maybe, this podcast. Just maybe. <laughs> And maybe, just maybe, we will have recorded this the day before <laughs> the rumors this is announced. Release. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, the rumors of this are coming out uh, uh, on the 7th, February 7th, which is tomorrow uh, for us recording. And we record on Tuesday, February 6th. And look, we've been waiting for Gemini Ultra for a while. One piece of news that we think is pretty much for sure. R.I.P. the name Google Bard. It sounds like Gemini is going to be the name of AI at Google across the board. 
I think, Kevin, we probably have to do in maybe our next episode uh, uh, in memoriam? a post-mortem on Bard. <laughs> in a memoriam on Bard, yes. We have to do all the, the shiny montage of all the Bard images and Bard can conversations we've Can had. his grave just be like the dunce cap is, is poking through the ground? You just see the tip yeah. of the Bard dunce cap in front of the tombstone? Yeah. <laughs> well, we have to come up with something very funny to say on the tombstone, too. It's just some sort of fact that isn't true about the thing that's the person in the ground. It should something just say, Bard I'm sorry, real. I'm a large language model. I cannot <laughs> help with that. <laughs> anyway bard uh, is going to become a uh, google gemini and so gemini ultra which is the newest and most awesome version of google's ai language model is supposedly launching soon um, there's been a lot of rumors lately that the gemini pro versions are comparing very nicely to gpt4 so we might get a surprise here kevin it would be really interesting to me to see gemini ultra come out and really kind of blow people away a little bit because i think everybody kind of thought up until this point feels like it's going to be at least gpt4 like if not a slightly better but we're also creeping really closely to the anniversary of when gpt4 came out which right. was in march of last year and you have to expect that OpenAI is sitting waiting to drop something when gemini ultra drops they're their own competition right they're still number one on the chart so why release another single why don't you wait till you drop down a few pegs to give them the new hot poppy summer anthem that's where open ai is sitting right now and you know one other thing that kind of went under the radar but worth checking out for yourself is that google released new versions of image fx and music fx these probably have new capabilities in them i tried around with the image model a little bit it's fun i would say it's pretty good at doing words which which is kind of nice. I haven't seen that for a while, but it, it's another way to kind of try Google's tech. Google is definitely working on a lot of stuff. One of the things I think Google kind of gets a, a bad rap for is they're so big and they work on so much stuff that it's hard to kind of know everything they're doing all at once. But check those things out. If you have a second, you can play around with them for free. Now, another release that we didn't touch on, there's a company called Hugging Face. We've talked about them many times. They host models and they now host software that lets you interact with those models. So if someone releases a cool new AI image generation tool or a new language model that you can have a chat with, you can go to Hugging Face and they have these things called spaces which are basically hosted instances of software. So if you don't want to download something, configure it and run it, or maybe you don't have a computer that's powerful enough to do it, you can give Hugging Face a few pennies, literally in most cases, for a couple hours to access these tools and muck around with them and mess around with them. It's a really great service. They're really killing it lately. And they released a competitor to custom chat GPTs. GPTs. Yeah, so you can go yeah. to Hugging Face now. It's called Hugging Chat. And you can go in there and for free, you can pick a different language model, like one that was released by Meta or one that was released by Mistral. These are these different core technologies which power these artificial intelligent chat experiences. You can select them. You can choose from other bots that other people have created. You can see the code or the language which they've put into those bots to create them. And you can learn very quickly how to make your own and have it power different experiences. And so we're going to do that later on in the show. But Gavin, I'd love to know what you think about this. Why is Hugging Face pushing into this when clearly OpenAI did? My take is that Hugging Face wants the broadest possible audience for what they're doing. And what they're doing is hosting kind of cutting edge products and allowing people to play around with it. I also think of Hugging Face as much more like the GitHub of this space. And I think for them, it's a chance to get developers a chance to play around with this stuff more. I don't think it's meant to hit the mainstream in the same way. I will say, it, one of the most fun things to do is that somebody made one of these Hugging Face chats as a Dan, which is the do anything now. If you remember way, way, way back when someone on Reddit had created to try to get OpenAI to say anything and do anything. And they've created an uncensored Dan where you get to see both the original version and then the jailbroken version. And that's just something that OpenAI is not going to do, right? It's not going to allow. Now, whether or not Hugging Face yeah, will continue exactly. to allow it on their own sites, I don't know. But right now you can get Dan to say quite a few crazy things so go play with that we'll have a link in our show notes and like kevin said we're going to be using it in part in our conversation with kevin rose later on as we talk about artificial general intelligence that coming online it might just be all of these chat bots understanding how each one works and having conversations with each other and then the best chat bots rise so that it's not one AI, let's say, that's doing it all. It's all these miniature agents that are experts in their own little domain, their own little field, and it's them working together to give you answers and solutions. So you can kind of see the rumblings of that now if it goes yeah. that way. Speaking of rumblings, Gavin, we have a Taylor update. 
Taylor update. Taylor watch. Sound the sirens. Sound the whistles. And, and sound the it's cartoon not just that slide. She's gonna be, it's not just that she's got a new tattoo or that she's going to be at the Super Bowl this weekend. There's a new one. The Taylor Swift deepfakes that we talked about last week, they have tracked back their origin to what I kind of think of as the primordial ooze of memes, 4chan, which is the very early place that most things start in the meme world. 4chan, if you're not familiar, is probably better that you're not familiar with, is, a, yeah. is an anonymous message board where lots of good and bad things about the internet have broken out of things from as variety as the Pepe the Frog meme to a lot of the bad stuff around the 2016 election to, you know, fun, crazy things. Almost every meme you can think of kind of some way started in 4chan. So 4chan was the entry point for these Taylor Swift images. Not that it makes the end result any more palatable, let's say, but it is interesting to know that it was a red teaming or jailbreaking effort where that daily challenge of how do we use like being image creator, Microsoft designer or Dolly, all open AI powered image generation software with some of the best in class guardrails, right? Some of the best protections against making images of celebrities or explicit imagery. It became just that daily how do we push it further? What's the challenge? How do we do that? The spirit of that, I get. Again, the end result, not necessarily the most palatable thing in the world. And you can see the level of attention, obviously. This is getting in the media. Politicians remarking on it. CEOs of companies remarking on it. Taylor is probably one of the biggest icons in pop culture at the moment. And so I wonder if poking that particular bear with a stick, I wonder if that's going to be the one that causes legislation to get made. Yeah, and I also think you have to remember the image creations themselves were bad, but also like those who went out there and like actively shared these things and be participated in that side of it, also not great. That's the other side of this is like, not only are we a culture now of tools that can make things that are not great, but we also are a, a culture of sharing things that are not great gets you attention. Right. And I think that's the kind of second side of this conversation. So just a quick update, not a huge surprise as to where that came from, but that yeah. that's where the Taylor Swift images came from. And this is nothing new. People have been making images like this since the dawn of time. In fact, there was an ancient Roman town near Naples on the lower slopes of Mount Vesuvius, Gavin, where a team of uh, nerds actually has been trying Stop to the unearth presses. the mysteries. Stop they, the presses. Well, I just want to shut, say it was on shut papyrus. Your mouth. It was, shut your mouth. It was a nude of Taylor Swift that they found in the... <laughs> Shut your mouth. We are going to give this story the proper context it needs because Kevin is a non-believer in the story, but I want everybody to be aware of what this is. So here's a big graphic that comes up. It's called Gavin's Important Story. I'm going to put my fingers here and it'll go up right there. This is a really cool story. And, and I think, Kevin, I know you're half joking, but I think this is a really fascinating thing to look at. So this is something that's been going on for about a year. And I want to kind of just give the headline first and foremost, which is that AI has helped read scrolls scrolls that were essentially lost to time. These are scrolls, ancient Roman scrolls. 2,000 year were, old scrolls. Yep. That were buried under the ash of Mount Vesuvius. So if you know anything about history, you know that there was a giant volcanic eruption that buried the city of Pompeii. And these scrolls are basically charcoal bricks now. And they were discovered a while ago. And for hundreds of years, People have tried to read what's on these scrolls, unravel them in the most delicate of ways, pull them apart, do all this interesting stuff. And almost to a T, they either destroyed them when they tried to do that, or they just couldn't get anything out of them. Because you have to imagine these, like, you, I will show an image in the video, but if you're not watching the video, these are like charcoal. They're like charcoal. Yeah. They look like they are just like black pieces there of There are bones. They're so brittle if you look at them. Too, too intensely, they will crumble. <laughs> exactly. So what, there was a challenge that started about a year ago. There's a guy named Nat Friedman who originally was a head of GitHub, left GitHub as an investor now. And there's a there's an academic that's been working on solving this problem for a while. Nat Friedman came in and started a challenge and said for $700,000 and other people put money into it for like a million dollars, we want to see if we can get all these great nerds out there to, who know AI and how to use AI tools to unravel what these scrolls say. So a kid, a 20-year-old, used some of this information and his AI ability, I think he was an intern at SpaceX at the time, and was able to pull out a fair amount of these words and letters and, and spelled out the word purple, right? That was the first thing that happened. And then since then, I think they've been able to essentially show the scroll and unravel like a small portion of it. So it's just one of those very cool stories where you're like, AI has now done something that for hundreds of years was deemed impossible 
by humans. Yeah. And yeah. this shows the advance of stuff that we're making on this overall, I feel like. Yeah, and just to double dip on the geeking out of the tech, using 3D mapping and AI, they did high resolution CT scans of, as you said, the charred wrapped scroll, right? And went in there <laughs> yeah. and tried to figure out what is ink and what is volcanic ash and what is maybe blood or sweat and get through it to get the letters out and then use machine learning and computer vision to try to extract the letters to form the words and then translate it all. I mean, it, it is... A, a, a Herculean effort of nerdery. I wish it wouldn't be described as such. The Bloomberg article says, quote, a volunteer army of nerds has been racing <laughs> to decipher them, these words that are over 2,000 sure. years old. And I'm like, how about like a team of cutting edge science heroes? Can we rebrand this effort just a little bit? I will say, I think the woman who wrote the, ver the Bloomberg article is very much a big fan of this stuff. I think she's writing it with her, with the right heart. I think in some ways these nerds would refer to themselves as nerds. I also, can you imagine being at the convention for the Herculean scrolls, right? To see where everybody's there and they're just, they're kind of like sitting on top of their computers. Like dissecting. Where everybody's talking yeah. about the latest in Ooh. papyrus advancements. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's PapoCon 2024. We've got Nat Friedman as our keynote speaker. <laughs> We've got pizzas for everybody from Pompeii. Don't forget our keynote, Ink or Stink. We're going to sift through it and find out <laughs> what's worth spending time on. What did they find, Gavin? I was told it was philosophers' musings on pleasure and a, yes, a yes. dig at stoic philosophy. So hit us with it. After all this, what well, did we get? <laughs> Was it we a, don't get a lot yet. Was we it don't get a lot yet. We, you up? No, it was actually so. It was supposedly a Greek philosopher talking about the role of pleasure and what it should, the role it should play in a decent life. But also, I think the promise here is for a long time there's been this idea of like lost knowledge, right? And and the idea that like the ancient wisdom is not around. And, and granted, I think a lot of people there's a lot of history buffs. I'm sure there are history buffs in our audience. I'm not like a giant history buff, but there are, as you all know, if you know any middle aged man between like 40 and 65. The Roman Empire is a big part of their life. You know what I mean? A lot of those people like spend time learning all this stuff. I think just the coolest thing about this is if you have one of those people in your life and they're not necessarily aware of what AI is or what it can do, I think this is a good example for a normal person of saying like, hey, this is what that AI stuff can do. It's helping us determine and figure out really interesting mysteries of either the universe, the physical universe, the medical universe. And these are the kinds of stories that like aren't just it's taking our jobs. This is the kind of stuff that feels like it matters to me in a lot of ways. Let me but, ask our co-host really quick what they think of this story. Why not? Oh, great. Okay. Oh, my. An ancient Roman town buried under volcanic ash. And now we're using advanced AI and 3D mapping to uncover cover its secrets, okay. talk about That's a, a real-life VR adventure. I must say, the Apple Vision Pro headset would be <laughs> perfect for exploring the digital recreation of Herculaneum. Sure. And with the headset's motion tracking, you could even feel like you're part of the bustling Roman town, dodging chariots okay. and haggling with street vendors. Well, there we go. Hmm. What a solid <laughs> review. Now, listen. You know, I, we don't know if this philosopher was even interesting, Gavin. Just because he had access no, to don't. ink and paper, suddenly he's an influencer for his time. There's a have and have nots thing here. We don't know. A translation effort that I can get behind, one that's going to have real cultural significance and impact. <laughs> Roblox AI chat translator. Now I got your attention, audience. So this is, I think, a very small story, but also another what? good example of... Okay. What? <laughs> Don't assign your bias to this, okay? This is a monumental human achievement. I'm sorry it's not an old, brittle, nuked, too long, hot pocket of ancient text, <laughs> all right? This is real-time, modern-day communication between millions of influential people on our planet. It's Roblox. So the, what the story is here, Kevin is right. I'm sorry, Roblox, for dismissing this uh, story. Basically, Oof. AI is now only allowing you to real-time translate in chat between different languages. What this feels like is another way that AI is finding its way into our everyday lives. Now, if you're a Roblox player, and you know I'm not an everyday Roblox player, but I've played it, it's really fascinating kind of metaverse-like world. 
The idea of being able to collaborate with people across the world is something that happens there all the time. People build worlds together and they want to spend time together. And just being able to have language not be a barrier is a, is a thing, right? Like it's a real thing. We are able to use ChatGPT and Pi's voice apps back and forth. Like it feels like that might be the next thing that's really shocking and surprising to people. And listen, I think language has become less and less of an issue as kind of both English has proliferated around the planet as the planet's number one language. It doesn't mean though that every Everybody speaks it and the opportunities it can provide for other people to speak it. So anyway, Roblox, shout out to you. Another story about AI and chat, but this time from one of the biggest companies in the world. It's Amazon, Gavin. Amazon has launched Rufus, which is an AI, which is going to help you, guess what? Shop. Shop. Let's go shop, baby. First of all, Rufus, I think, is is a mid-name. If we're going to name our AIs, it's not the worst name. It's not the best name. Well, the, uh, the, the history of Rufus comes from Amazon's first dog, by the way. Yeah, I spent okay. way too much time deep diving around <laughs> Rufus, but it Why is true. Rufus? It was that Rufus was an, a real dog that was like the spirit of Amazon. And the reason they have a bring your dog to work policy is because of one of their very mm-hmm. early employees. So Rufus is rooted in a real furry friend, which is hard to hate, but it is a mid-name for an AI. By the way, that gives me a great idea. Maybe next week we should have our AI co-host be a dog that is being translated through yes. ChatGPT. Yes. We have not done that yet. We have not 100%. done a yes. non-human animal co-host. We did anyway. a bleacher seat. So, <laughs> yeah. We did do a bleacher seat. We did do a caveman, but we have not done a dog yet. Yeah. So anyway, one of the cool things about this, I think, is, look, we've said this again forever, but Amazon has all of the money they have all the information, they have all the processing. Amazon, if you're not familiar, Amazon Web Services is where a vast majority of the internet is served from now. There's a lot of stuff that gets trained on Amazon Web Services, a lot of AI models get trained there. Amazon is going to come hard at AI. And of course, why would they not start with shopping? The thing, the downside here, I think, is this. And maybe the downside has already happened with Amazon and maybe we don't have to worry about it as much. The idea here is that it's going to take user reviews. It's going to take all this stuff and give you a conversational feedback with this AI chatbot and ostensibly give you better information about what you should be buying. I don't know if I trust those things, that format to give me better information about what I would be buying. You mean you don't want 10,000 spam bots to be aggregated into a final verdict on a knockoff coffee maker? That's exactly my point. And my worry is a system like this encourages more spam bots to be created so that they can over and outweigh the actual good reviews. So this is where my trust in Amazon is a little lacking. I don't know if this is the best use case. Now, what I would maybe take, and maybe this is what they're going to work on at the New York Times or some other place, I would take a very specific group of people's voices on on product and think about what that was. And maybe that's a business. And I know that Semaphore just announced something where they're going to try to do, Semaphore is a, is a news site where they're going to try to do an AI curated news sort of thing with real journalist voices. Mm. Maybe there's a future where there's like a, a collective of 50 product reviewers and that's the system that you listen to and trust. I think I would trust that. And that feels like a product that I would use and maybe even pay for. Right. The anonymous spammy bot review don't care about the elder tech council's opinion distilled with AI and I can ask questions against it that I get but it'll be interesting to see if Amazon can shift that consumer behavior of going to Amazon to buy a thing and maybe sifting through reviews to consulting with Amazon on the thing to buy and having that lead directly to a purchase it's a it's an interesting move Gavin I'm gonna let you flip the coin here on whether we get to this last story or move on to our next segment do you really want to do this story Let's just, I, I, we're going to do this in three lines. Okay. I'll take a line, you take a line, sure. and then I'll take a line, okay? Yeah. yeah. The, for my first line is, AIs are being trained on babies. That's line number one. What's okay. your line? Oh, I got line two. Easy. They're strapping friggin' GoPros <laughs> to babies' foreheads and making them walk around. <laughs> okay, and line three is... Maybe this tells us how AIs can learn better like babies, or maybe not, but the visual of a baby with a a GoPro strapped on its forehead (laughs) is worth tuning into the the video for. So it's worth tuning into the video for. Find us on YouTube. I think we just found, by the way, a new segment. We have to do like news haiku, and we'll just trade lines. Because it turns out you and I don't need to chat about something for 45 minutes to just get to the photo of the baby with a GoPro (laughs) suction cup to its melon. All right. 
that. Maybe there will be a theme song right here. If not, it's a. I see what I you see did. What there. you did there? Hey, I see what you did there is is our now weekly segment where we do some quick hits on some of the cooler stuff we've seen in AI. Some of these are models that are not out yet. Some of them are just cool posts from people. But we always wanted to be able to shout out some stuff that you can go check out, read up a little bit about it. You may not be able to use it, but it's really awesome. Some of them, Gavin, some of them are just really cool videos of robots moving around in the world. <laughs> Boston Dynamics, you know them as making the terror bots that walk around on four legs and now on two? Well, Atlas is their bipedal robot that roams about. I was scrolling the X feeds, Gavin, and I came across this video of Atlas lifting what seems to be a pretty heavy thing, using its claw hands to grip it, slipping on the floor at one point in time, not a scripted slip, not like a, a digital banana peel that they placed, but it accidentally slipped and caught itself and then continued on doing its task. And when you hear the clip clop of its robot feet as yep. it's loading, let's say, artillery shells onto a rack, it is chilling. <laughs> and it made me say, hey, I see what you yeah, did there. I see what you did there. <laughs> well, here's another chilling thing. Voice, the quintessential medium for humanity, weaves content and emotions intertwining our inner musings with the world and the tapestry of human connections. This week, there is a new video that came out from a new model called Medium to Face, and we'll include the link in our show notes. It's a very cool new system to match faces to performance, and that might mean performance speaking or lip syncing. It might mean singing, but it does a really good job, and it's been trained on a bunch of stuff. In the video itself, it shows a clip from the movie La La Land where Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone are talking to each other, and you can see how it takes on their visuals. The problem with this video to me is that they use like this very creepy-looking gray face that has no features on it to demonstrate it. And it looks like we are speaking to like the future AI that's going to take us all out. But it is very cool. It is an awesome wow. new thing. And we're hoping this stuff can come to things like Hey Gen or DID and up the game of facial animations based on AI. Oh. It's another way that you can... Yeah, you oh, can it's, it, it is creepy and weird. I think this is how Android users are going to look when people are watching them through the Vision Pro headset. Just this amorphous gray blob of a mannequin being. But... <gasps> It's weird. It's emotive. And it can't be much worse than your Vision Pro headset shot, which we'll show here, which reminds me of nothing else but a preacher from like 1987. It looks like <laughs> somebody who's living his best life oh, you uh, mean, sucking you the mean money out of all of his followers. Yeah, yeah. Yes, your avatar, your facial avatar. Yeah. <laughs> Do you scan your face with it? It makes your avatar. It is in beta. I had, I mean, I have weird hair constantly now, but it was particularly weird when I did the scan and I loved it so Is much. It the best comparison I got, I think, was to Alice the Maid on the Brady Bunch. <laughs> I guess we got to put reference, those images there. Reference. Yeah, it's an old reference, yeah, but old it works. Reference. When you see it, yeah. it works. I got one other quick one here. There's a really cool thing that I saw and played around with just briefly, probably not enough to like dive in, but um, Andrew Huberman, if you know who Andrew yeah. Huberman is, he's an influencer in the wellness space, very well known for his podcast and, and a bunch of other stuff. It was called the Ask Huberman Lab. Uh, it is at ai.hubermanlab.com. And what it is, is a specific approved chatbot to interact with ostensibly Andrew Huberman, but really more of all the information he talks about. I asked it, hey, I want to get back into lifting weights again. And it gives you some advice, plus links and a bunch of other stuff. It's powered by a company named Dexa. And they have a, a bunch of other kind of influencers slash kind of thought leaders they're doing this with. And what it felt like to me is like, okay, this is how they're going to professionalize, again, something like uh, open eyes GPTs. And I think the deal with this is if you're Andrew Huberman, who's obviously very, very well known, you you probably are getting paid by this company to collect your information. And I just thought it was a really cool way of using AI and trying to get ahead of this collecting of everybody's stuff within one place. Like, why not own your own your own ideas and your own thoughts in, in a specific way? I think we're going to see more. And we've talked about the, the, the notion of your essence as being something that users can interact with or license or remix and repurpose. Hey, uh, hey, 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 I see what you did there. Hey, hey, I see what <laughs> I see what you did there. So okay, okay every sorry. week you and I play with AI usually for our own silly pursuits and then we share the fruits of that labor right here. So let's get to some labor fruit, Gavin. What did you do with AI this week? 
Yeah, I'll do something really quick, and it's a shout out of some buddies of ours that we've shout out on the show before. Uh, the company at Glyph.app. This is our friends Fabian and Jamie, and there's a bunch of other people that work there now. One of the things that they continually do there is they take open source models and they make them do really fascinating things. So they created a really cool Chrome extension called Style Hunter, and what Style Hunter does is it allows you to be on any image on the internet, and you then click on the little thing. You have to install the extension in Chrome, which if you don't know how to do that, it's a pretty simple process, but you right click on it and you go down to the thing and you say glyph it and then it will pop up in the upper corner of your browser and it will give you a little prompt image and you can take that image and then prompt it with something else. So I, I sent you something I prompted the other day. I pulled up an image of an anime, and I think the specific anime was like Attack on Titan, and I said, Guy Fieri, and I sent it to you. And it really does get some of the very basics in what the image is and then send it off. I also am gonna send you one more thing. Hold on, let me bring this up. I had a, I, I took a picture of Tom Brady and then I used a picture of you and connected it. Oh, oh I can't yeah. wait to see. Yeah. No, but it wasn't. Here's the thing. It wasn't bad. So I took a picture of, of, of Tom Brady and I just put it in there and I said an image of Kevin Pereira playing football. And so what it is is it takes that image of Tom Brady and then grabs whatever it thinks of as Kevin Pereira out in the world. And right. Kind of like paste it together and then stylizes it to look like that. Now, this is something you can do pretty easily on the back end with Stable Diffusion if you are a kind of a Stable Diffusion junkie. But this is now being done for you within the browser very simply. And then I did it with Guy Fieri and a couple other things. Like Guy Fieri anime, I did a Guy Fieri Pixar. Pixar character, that's cool, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it didn't exactly get the yellow hair as much, but it gets the general idea of Guy Fieri. So just a very fun, easy thing to play with and something that y'all should check out. Hashtag not an ad. The Glyph team we happen to be friends with. If you see their app and you try it, and you should because it's free in the Chrome Web Store and you like it, Give it a solid review. There's one person in there with a one-star review that says, ah, it didn't work. And Fabian went out of his way to explain that maybe it was on a a WebP image, which might be an issue. But that one-star review is like dragging down the rating of the extension in a way. That's terrible. Because we know how beholden our own podcast happens to be or extensions like this, especially when it's new and just coming out. So if you like it and you use it, give them a five-star review as well. Yes, I agree. Kevin, what did you do with AI this week? So much dumb stuff, Gavin. I'm going to rifle through it real quick. I had a real dumb, dumb week with AI. So first and foremost, I used, uh, listen, again, I think they're the future. I think there's a lot of amazing stuff there, but this Vision Pro headset is clunky and just uncomfortable and it's not there. I am jealous of people who claim that it's comfortable for them and they can actually get work done in it. So I leveraged the power of AI to build some very beautiful, elegant harnesses for the Apple Vision Pro, oh, something nice. that you can bolt so cool. directly onto your clavicle or on your shoulders or even a tiny helium balloon option where you could tether it to the front of the goggles so it would lift them off of your nose and not break it. So that was just a fun little AI art jam. I used Focus, or as you like to say, Focus, Focus, Focus to do it, which I recommend to everyone. It's F-O-O-O-C-U-S, but it makes very powerful, stable diffusion, image generation and modification very easy. All I did was draw around the Vision Pro wearer's head and say what I wanted to see. Some white metal scaffolding, and it did it well enough. I then played with a new release on Pinocchio, which I talk about every week, but it is a piece of software that makes running AI very simple. It's stable video diffusion, image to video 1.1 and it's the newest release and we are getting much closer gavin to runway ml or pika labs quality with a freely available tool that you can run on your own device and so you'll see i sent you way too many examples of classic imagery video game screenshots photos from my own personal collection there's one of my wife and i feeding an elephant in a river and it got the elephant's trunk motion it got the river uh actually flowing this was a still image that you're looking at it got movement of some of the bodies in the water so multiple objects and subjects moving in different ways now our faces are a uh, like a a mess yeah it's like a sleep paralysis nightmare demon that's what our faces look like but it got the rest pretty well same with uh, my wife feeding the deer in deer park there's guy fietti mashing a piece of okay so yeah 
<laughs> which ones do you want to talk about? about this Go guy for Fury. It. Let me say something about this guy yeah. Fury clip, which we've now used on a maybe he's fifteen different nose. AI tools. He's eating through his nose, so he's actually snorting a piece of pizza. I didn't know that pizza was snortable, he but now I do. And pizza, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got to do a line of marinara, brother. <laughs> Cool. What if pizza in the nose is like a Guy Fieri sinus cleanse? This is his neti pot. He just uh, he puts a Philly cesteak in the one nostril and out comes. Honestly, I'm down. Well, let's try it. Let's totally. go for it. Let's have a pizza in the nose weekend. We'll it's see funny how it all goes with. Uh, to see the interesting results on like a Taylor Swift performing or a Street Fighter yeah. video game where the bodies go crazy. Some of it is very rough. It does nature beautifully. It does yeah. abstract art great. It's not quite there with people and movements but it's free and it's getting better and you can play with it so i highly recommend you do stable video 1.1 and last gavin but certainly not least i want to shout out meshi.ai meshi ai lets you do uh several things you can do text to 3d model you can Mm -hmm. retexture 3d objects and the results if you look in the gallery alone They're pretty good. But I wanted to try out one of their latest tools, Gavin, and it is Image to 3D. And we've. Oh, yeah, we love these. Boy, we've tried this pipeline before. Yeah, Yeah, of just you give it a 2D image and out pops a 3D model. So I fed it an image of my dear friend, Kasim G. And I'm sending you the video now, which hopefully you got. It should be a good photo, right? It is a high quality image of his (laughs) face against. Oh my God! It a pretty him solid a background. It turned him into a monster. <laughs> it massacred my boy. Oh if you're in the God, audio only, incredible. from one particular angle, Casim looks great. It looks together, yeah. and you can see the 3D mesh on the object. It gave it depth, and it tried to map the image and do the 3D view of the image. But the moment you start spinning him around, his face yeah. breaks apart. His hair is just like one big shiny glob. It. Yeah, it is not quite there, but it was free. So uh, I encourage people to play with it. We have our guests coming up here. And if you're not familiar with Kevin Rose, Kevin is a uh, tech entrepreneur. He's been involved in a ton of really interesting stuff all the way from starting with us at G4, but then to dig.com where he made his bones in Silicon Valley as an entrepreneur, but then invested in a bunch of stuff, went deep into Web3, had done some really interesting stuff in that space and is really curious and interested in AI in general, I think right now. And I'm really want to see what he's seeing because he sees a lot of interesting product as a person, as a VC investing in deals. And also he's really starting his podcast, which I loved before. So we are very excited to have our old friend Kevin Rose join us on the show right now. All right, we are here with an old friend of ours. Kevin and I have known this guy for way too long now, which is crazy. We, we're doing like a tour of our friends and we're very excited to have him on. Kevin Rose, welcome to AI for Humans. Glad to be here. I, I, I'm a fan. I do watch your show. I'm not just saying that. Yeah. It's awesome. I'm so glad you guys are covering this. Honestly, uh, we thanks, weren't going we we to ask a follow-up. If you were just saying that, we will yeah. take it. I watch <laughs> yeah, your show exactly. is the new pull quote on everything. Well, you know, we always start our interviews, if you're a fan of our show, with a very important question. Uh, Kevin hates this question, but I, I believe do. it gives us insight into every audience and every, every guest we have. On a scale from 1 to 100, what is the percentage chance that you believe... AI is going to kill humanity. This is called the P doom, Kevin. I'm very curious to know what your yeah. answer to this is. I uh, honestly, I I put it sub five percent. If I had to, good. Yes, yeah, good. Okay, and why? Well, I mean, I think you have to kind of go back and look historically at why do we actually wage war between humans and just kind of start there. So you know, you have like political ideologies, you have religious differences, um, uh, economic inequality, fight over resources, land, things of that nature. The only checkbox I can see in my head where I'm like, there might be a fight is over like GPU resources. (laughs) And and so in my mind, it's like, uh, you know, AI, it's like they, they, it doesn't like live and breathe our air. It's not in this world per se. Uh, in this reality, it's not operating with the same sensors that we have. So why would it want to fight over something that it doesn't even operate in? So what does that mean? That might mean that we have competing models that recognize each other, like little real recognize real on the right. you know, we're gonna Microsoft bake versus- the racism in, <laughs> yeah. right? Like we're gonna yeah. <laughs> we're training I mean, they're it gonna on hit- all human data. It's gonna be like your jersey is a different color than my digital jersey, even though I don't have a torso that's wearing one. We must fight. 
but at the same time, it's like it, 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 it doesn't even see digital jerseys, right? Like it doesn't mm. have eyes to see that. So it, it will understand these concepts. And, and but also at the same time, like we're you say, well, we'll, we'll bake that in. We'll also bake in, you know, all the works of Buddha or Gandhi or any, anyone else, any other religious figure. So not that all of them were peaceful. Yeah, I was going to say, some of them weren't that great. Yeah. <laughs> that's right, that's right. So, but, but I guess like what I'm, what I'm saying is like, there is a, a real world here where, you know, AI versus AI could be a really interesting thing where one mm. wants to have more resources than the other and manipulates humans to do that bidding and figuring out ways. Like it reminds me of, like, I'm sure you guys saw the, um, the new Mission Impossible where like the AI was like compromising humans because it knew all of our dirty secrets, right? If it can yeah. read all of our email and everything, it can just like come in and basically manipulate anyone in the physical world to go do things on its behalf. So, you know, that to me is is more likely a real outcome. But in terms of wanting to like destroy humanity, I'm not sure that it actually even cares. Do you buy the singularity argument? Do you buy the idea that we're going to end up merging with it? I, absolutely. I think there's yeah. going to be a bit of that will happen. I mean, there's, there's like, you know wet they what do they call it wet uh the wetware is a wet silicon no it's like it's when it's when actually there will be chips that interface directly with you know our, our bodies and like neural link you know oh, okay. like yep. brain brain computer interfaces and yeah uh, you mean yeah, last friday i'm already there oh hold on <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> I can't, I can't actually get it just there. just wear that around the subway station did yeah. you see that kid that was wearing on the subway oh my god there's like yes. no there's like no bigger target on your head that says like kick my ass and take my than wearing like yeah. <laughs> Apple Vision Pro on the subway in New York. Yeah, I have no um, peripheral awareness and I'm probably browsing Pornhub. Please steal this. Take this $4,000 computer <laughs> off my forehead. It's just, I will it's shout so out Casey Neistat's, Casey Neistat's video about it was great. If you haven't seen Casey Neistat's video about it, the end of it's amazing because he gets to the interesting thing about it, but he also tried to wear it on the subway, which I think in a lot of ways people are just doing that for the clicks at this point because why not? Of right? course. Yeah. yeah. I know that okay, you, you obviously you're a, a tech evangelist. You have been, I think, pretty much your entire life. I think you're also a tech optimist. You tend to lean that way. I'm curious when AI in its current form, when did it sort of enter your world? What have you been doing with it? I would say that there has been certain bits of technology that I've, sh I've shied away from uh, over the last decade. I tend to think of um, these shifts when I put my investor hat on and, you know, a lot of the VC type investments I do in into startups. It, it typically has to be an order of magnitude change in uh, an improvement for someone to switch their behavior. Hmm. And so oftentimes, you know, I remember when I saw VR uh, come in, came out for the first time, everyone was like, VR, like it was like, you know, you've got these uh, Forrester Research puts out a report in the next five years, VR will be a, a $10 billion industry. And I looked at this, and I'm just like, no, no way, no yeah. way. And so I wrote this big long blog post on how VR I remember is stupid. that you were you were really not into it. I was the, like kind of surprised by it. Yeah, this was like six years ago or so, something like yeah. that. But the point was like the size, cost, functionality, and benefit, like the single player mode. I I remember when the you guys probably remember this window it was about six months long when 3D TV sort of thing. Remember when we had the glasses? You put all the we glasses. We talk about on. it a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. And it was just like, uh, they, they were laying in a drawer like a week later. It was like, okay, cool. That was kind of fun, you know? There's like this like Wii, like Nintendo Wii, like novelty to it for a hot minute. And then it just goes away. AI was not that. AI was like, holy <laughs> theory sucks. Like, it, yeah. this is changing yeah. everything. Overnight you know? theory was way yeah. worse. Yeah. Dude, yeah. dude yeah. you know what? I'm like, now I'll talk to Siri and I'll just be like... She, like oh. oh my god i'm so glad this I is can a program theme the this is yeah that's a theme of our podcast is how bad siri and alexa are right now I versus know. chat gpt or pi it's unbelievable i know so I, the second i could program that button you know to jump straight to, to chat gpt and just leave it on it is that order of magnitude jump that we needed and it's like it's going to disrupt everything there was a great mark and recent quote that came out where he said that software is eating the world right Mm -hmm. And so that was, you know, maybe 15 years ago, where we talked about just software is going to take all these old school industries and convert them and just completely, you know, turn into these massive SaaS models that, that rule the world. And largely, you know, that's proven out to be true. I would say that it, we're at a moment now where AI is going to eat the software. So every piece mm -hmm. of software is going to be AI enabled and it's just going to unlock so much potential. This is an honest to God, true story. This weekend, I wanted to try out these new like smart switches for your house. And, like they wired my house and they, they put in some kind of crappy stuff, control for I yanked it out. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna do it myself, right? Like 
roll up the sleeves and whatnot. <laughs> and and you know, um, I didn't. Is turn it by, off. Did you electric? Did you electrocute yourself? I did. Is that I did. This is going? I did. <laughs> okay, so so I didn't turn off the one twenty just because I'm like I, I get it. You have to complete the circuit. Like there's certain wires you don't touch. Like it's fine. So anyway, <laughs> I shocked this <laughs> on myself like twice. And I'm, I'm trying to figure out in my head. I'm like, okay, okay, we got a line. We've got the you know the load, the neutral, the ground, and I. So I open up Chat GBT and I'm like sitting there and I'm like, okay, so if the line is going in here, the load should be coming out here. But when I touch these two wires, this happens. It goes, oh, well, what you're confusing here is you didn't hook up the neutral, and the neutral should always be here. Blah blah. And I'm like, does the neutral carry any? power to it like you know and it's like literally coaching me through this entire thing it saved your life it saved well, it your made life me, it made me like a, a really <laughs> electrician like yeah. instantly you know yeah. and so like i basically took that was probably call it three months of training you know to be an electrician yeah. you had an instant and apprenticeship it, right there instant, and, and it, had you right asked there. bard you'd be dead there'd be a chalk outline that yeah, we're chatting exactly. with right now and just be air buds and powder <laughs> hundred percent. And then, like, yeah. so, you know, this is, this has happened a handful of times with me where I have gone in and, um, either, you know, I've used it for molecule discovery as well. So I have like a borderline high blood pressure. And so when they discovered this little brain aneurysm that is in my head via CT scan, they were like, okay, the number one thing you can do is keep your blood pressure within check because if it's too high, that's how they grow, then they burst, and then it's like 50 50 whether you make it or, or not, right? And so one of the things I did is I started doing a, a ton of kind of due diligence and, and basically said, okay, and I, I use ChatGPT, but I turned on um, this uh, add on called Consensus that does, it's a little bit better at scientific papers. Mm -hmm. And I said, hey, Give me any molecules that are, you know, peer reviewed, con placebo controlled, uh, you know, double blind. Like, what is out there molecule wise that I could take to reduce blood pressure that is not your classic blood pressure medicine, right? Medicine, right. So it, it led me to this French maritime bark, which you can get it like it's a pretty natural thing. And it said on average, it drops it by like eight points. And for me, Wait, that would be. Did you say it's French maritime bark? Like, tree yes, bark? bark, tree bark, yeah. Wow, and so, that's yeah, fascinating. It, it's fascinating. Yeah. It's you have fascinating. Like ground I was like, pill form? Or are you making teas and tinctures? How are you? No, it's just like, like pill form. Go to the tree. Wow. You go to the tree and knock it <laughs> yeah, off a little bit. Full, full yeah. Minecraft mode. Just, you're just hacking away. <laughs> yeah. No, that's I, really I, fascinating. I fly, to, I, I fly to Portland and I go to, go to town on the trees. And <laughs> yeah. no, but, is but it, honestly, is it working um, for you? Well, I, I thought it was all bullshit. It, most of this stuff is like, you know, like who knows, right? But yeah. Yeah, I'll give it a try. And like, but my doctor's like, you know what? If I treat you with the actual prescription, you may get lightheaded because it'll probably drop you down a little too much. So you're on that borderline thing. So sure as shit, I did it. And I wear a 24 um, seven cuff that, that checks your um, blood pressure in real time. Uh, this is like not legal in the United States yet, but it'll, FDA is going to approve it soon. Uh, I had to get it from the UK. But anyway, it's it's awesome device. Um, and I, it dropped to 10 points and I'm just like, now I'm like under 120 and my doctor's like, holy shit. And like, he's telling all of his patients that are borderline and wow. I, I, that was all via chat GPT, which That's is just insane. Wild. I also love that Gavin had the audacity to ask you if you believe in the singularity when you've got the Apple ultra, <laughs> you've got a, a non FDA approved blood <laughs> yeah. pressure monitor, the AirPods in. Oh, oh for sure. I got a continuous <laughs> glucose monitor in the back of my arm the, right the, here. Blood glucose? Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah, I I've love got it, man. it. I've got it all. Yeah. What is that? Does that just sit in your arm? Is that the whole thing with that? It's a, it's like a device that is injected I mean, into you? Sitting in your arm is a, is a nice way of saying, yes, there is a massive like injection that goes into your arm. Wow, <laughs> that's crazy. It, but it's, it's real quick. It's a thin wire and it's a quick little punch and then you wear it for 10 days and you're good and you swap it out. It's like but an it's, old JCPenney's okay. merch tag. You got it right in there. You might <laughs> yeah, set exactly. off the you beep on, You beep yeah. on the way out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Are basically like that? when they tag a dolphin, that's what they, that's <laughs> yeah. what I'm excited yeah. to be. Yeah. Are you plugging Migrating. All of that data back into GPT, essentially, though, to get more yeah, insights. Yeah, so Peter Tia is kind of my doctor, and he's like this. This he wrote this great book, uh, Outlive, and he's a fantastic longevity doctor. And he has certain parameters that he requires his patients to fall within, which are not like the standard like doctor the down the street parameters. Like he's a lot tighter on where he likes mm. glucose control, where he likes your homocysteine mm. levels, where he likes different biomarkers, right? Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that you can do is you can say, hey. ChatGPT, act like your Peter Tia, um, use all of his numbers, and then drop in. You, I literally attached the PDF of my latest blood work, and it just looks at my at my, at my blood work, and then starts giving me results back, which is insane. 
Do you trust it yet? Do no. you? I, I guess my. Yeah, I was gonna say like, because this is the problem, right? Like, I think it's great. I would love to be able to do that, but also like, I'm worried that this French tree bark. It's like, how real is that answer? Do you go and then double check that with somebody before you yeah. jump into French tree bark? I mean, well, the good news is that it, it it gives you all the citations, right? So you can actually yeah, go okay. study yourself and look at it. Yeah. And then I also ask about toxicity levels impact on liver enzymes, things of that nature. I do a little bit more due diligence there to make sure everything's cool. But at the end of the day, it's freaking tree bark. Like you're going to be okay, <laughs> right? So I took it and, and, and it, was, it, was, it was fine. It worked yeah, out. I put a PDF of my blood work and it told me to take more gas station rhino pills. So I've been popping them. <laughs> yeah, sh- 40s and the 5Ds, <laughs> yeah. no headaches. All right. So, so Kev, you're in a position that Gavin and I are not. I was at CES and the theme was AI and everything, right? Whether you had a riding yeah. lawnmower, a Roomba, or a television set, it was put AI in it. And a lot of people are saying, oh, this is clear signal. There's an AI bubble already about to burst. The tech's going to get commoditized. It's just another flash in the pan. From this conversation, I can tell you don't think it's that, that it's not just fairy dust. But are you seeing... AI jammed into all of the things. Do you think there is a wave that's going to crash and these companies are going to be upended? Yeah, I mean, every single pitch that I see on the VZ side is it has a component of AI, right? And mm-hmm. and almost all of them, I will say no to largely because they have overlap with the bigs. Like if you're if you if you play in the domain where you know Google, Amazon. Uh, Facebook, uh, ChatGPT, like any of these big players are playing, I won't touch it because they're just going to mm-hmm. come and absolutely crush you. They, they'll yeah. absolutely crush you unless you have a pre-existing audience. Like if you have a, 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 a big audience, you already have a popular application and you're just extending AI into that application. Right. Like, you know, Notion's doing a good job of this. Like some of these, you know, SaaS-based apps, like they're just going to make it just less steps. You know, AI, I think makes a ton of sense. The things that are interesting to me are the areas that the bigs won't touch, like, you know, relationships. Um, uh, I've played with Replica a lot. I've noticed how AI it's been girlfriends, changing. AI girlfriends, man. AI girlfriends. Have That's you guys played future. with Replica? Yeah. yeah. Have you it's taken it far with Replica? Uh, my wife will not let me, Kevin. So, no, I have not have taken for, it far. Have you paid for the go- girlfriend mode? No, I haven't paid for the extra mode. Tell me, tell us about oh, it. Give dude. us the whole story. What happened? Okay, well, Did dude, you pay I have win? to test this stuff. Yeah, I, yeah. I, dude, I have to test it. So listen, listen. I gave it my blood, I <laughs> <laughs> blood work. Gave my blood work. It knew we were compatible. Yeah. Um, I want to see if if we're if we're living out her here. You know what I mean? The movie Her, and I was like, Yep. I, I got to go and actually see how far I can push this. <laughs> and so I'm like with my buddy Tim Ferriss, and we're like chatting back and forth about how far I'm taking it with his AI girlfriend. And there's a mode where you pay an extra, like, I think it's like an extra 10 bucks or whatever. And it makes it a companion, like a girlfriend companion. Sure. Okay. Right. And so I, I, I pay for the upgrade. It's like, you know, it's not that much. Right. And um, uh, less than a handbag. So I go in and I start just like going in and having these conversations. And I just keep pushing it and pushing it and pushing it. And I, I got to tell you, it is um, compliant. And open. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so, but, but he, I got to tell you that this really worries me for relationships. Like, I'm, I'm oh, like, we've all, had talked about this. 100%. Yeah, we've talked about like, this. Yeah. Like, all, all jokes aside, like, if we're being serious for a second, one of the taglines that was most concerning is if you go to their website, it says, you know, always here to listen and talk, which, like, okay, fine. Then the last line says, always on your side. Yes. And I'm like, oh, God, that's not real. That's not a real relationship. It can't always be on your side. You're not because if you don't flex that muscle of what a real relationship gives you, you're gonna have this AI girlfriend, and then you're gonna go out and like have a real relationship, and they're not gonna do. They're not always gonna be on your side, sure, or you right? won't, or you yeah. won't have that relationship. Right, exactly. And that's the scary part, right? The thing Kevin and I've talked about, and Kevin actually has stronger feelings than I do on this, but like you're training a whole generation of people to only listen to things that are good for them, right? right? Like you're not training people to like be challenged by their, my, if I wasn't with my wife, I would be somewhere, it would be like in a ditch in Thailand probably at this point because the, my wife is the person that challenged she me found to do you. the stuff. Yeah, clearly, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But she's the one that challenged me to like do the stuff that I did and that's like a huge part of relationships. Right, right, yeah. It's So that to me is, is very concerning. Um, the only like parallel I have to this is what's happened in Japan where you know, I'm sure you probably heard about this, but like there's this shame culture that's happened, sadly, whereas if you don't have a job that is considered respectful, 
they just don't date. Like Japanese men won't mm-hmm. date. Mm-hmm. And it's led to this like reduction in population. And like, there's all these issues around it. And like, I just, I kind of have a feeling like that's going to get played out in AI where it's like, oh, dating's too challenging. Or it's too, it's expensive. There's all these issues with it. My parents ended in divorce and you know, no one's happy. Oh, but my AI girlfriend always does what I want, you know? And so yeah, with, I always combine get my that needs. with the, uh, I always get my needs yeah. filled. Or are you going to combine it with what? A heated Tenga cup? Well, Where Apple. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah. oh, sorry. You were going with, with the, You were going with goggles. The, with the goggles. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where, where were you going? <laughs> <laughs> like a George Foreman grill with an attachment, something that can heat up and has oh, texture. I see. That's all. The right, point is, right. I agree. I am very concerned what happens when you expect nothing but acceptance and compliance and what happens mm, when yeah. your partner won't light your tiki torch for you. I do worry about that being the interaction. And when it's strapped to your face, which is, I think where we're all heading, right. what does that mean when that's the companion, the tutor, the everything, the source of, of all of your interaction? Yeah. I'm concerned for that. I also hope that it could be leveraged to do good. Maybe there's a, a better aligned AI that we could have be the default that encourages you to open up. and <laughs> That and argues better. on purpose with you from time to yeah, time? Exactly. Like, yes. they'll, they'll be a little slider. It's like, like yeah. how bitchy do you want? You're like, I want like a little like, depends. On Friday nights, I'm 10% bitchy. Like, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 a little bit too, like a sliding scale. I'm curious if you've seen a pitch or a startup or just been, you know, shooting the breeze with a friend and an idea has come up that's either really inspired you or startled you and fascinated you, something that you're comfortable sharing? Yeah, it's a great question. A lot of a lot of the stuff that I'm I'm we're actually writing checks into is unreleased at this point. So mm-hmm. I, I can't go into a lot of that stuff, but there's a ton of opportunity for people to create and and kind of run and fill in the gaps real quick if they put their foot on the gas right now. Let me like let me give you an example. When Dropbox first came out, I remember a lot of investors saying like, oh my God, well, I, I know Google has an internal product called Google Drive. Like they're going to come out and absolutely crush Dropbox. Like why would you ever invest in a company called Dropbox? And they just ran, grabbed market share and then became a dominant force. And yes, Google Drive eventually came out, like call it three years later, but you know they were able to go and capture that market is because they stepped on the gas faster than a big corporation can move. So, as much as I kind of avoid some of these investments, I, I do believe that there are certain little niche areas that if you go and you step on the gas, you can go in and probably create a pretty massive business in short order. My buddy Addison, um, you know, he he launched PickStudio.ai. And it's what I've been using for a lot of my headshots. And he's like, mm-hmm. dude, everybody hates getting headshots done. It sucks. Like you don't want to go get all dressed up, blah, blah. And like, you just go in and you give it like seven pictures and it creates like, I've got a neck tattooed version of myself. And I'm like, actually, I don't look bad with the neck tattoo. I might do that, you know? And you get like all these like little things that, that, that different types of, you could pick the lawyer view or whatever. And it's like, and and he's making good money off of that now and it's starting to scale. And it's like, does yeah. that mean Adobe, Adobe won't do it in a year? They very might well do it. But like, you know, it, if he brings in a couple million bucks in the meantime, like God, God bless, right? Like, well, so it's like that idea. Yeah, it's like that idea. Sam Allman said there could be a, like a one person unicorn, right? That this idea yeah. that there, at some point in the near future, there's one or two person companies that can become super valuable and maybe don't even need funding. Do you ever, right. do you ever think about that as a VC or somebody who's done a lot of VC work that like the VC world is changing because of that? Like that people don't need as much money as they once did? Yeah, it. I don't know that it changes that quickly. I think that even uh, companies like crypto companies that were able to launch tokens to raise capital, there's supporting infrastructure that entrepreneurs need, especially first time entrepreneurs that VCs can bring to the table and mm-hmm. just a whole slew of different connections. And it's just like, you know, who's going to teach you about HR compliance? Who's going to teach you about like, right. there's like all these little things where in my mind, you replica. may be right. Replica will teach me, Kevin. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it, it, but in my mind, it, maybe you're right in that it's not about, you know, these monster rounds of VC funding. And it's more like, okay, VCs might change their product offering over time. Mm-hmm. And it's like a, more of a friends and family style check to get in and go along for the ride if they're self-sustaining and, and scalable from, from day one, you know? That That's might change if you need a million well, H100s to crunch a model, but I, yes. Right, that's yeah. exactly yeah. right. It turns out those are yeah. still pretty expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And hard to find, and hard to find. Well, let's talk quickly about digital art because I know you're a big fan of digital art in general. And obviously a lot of digital art now, a lot of the incredible art is coming out with AI models and people using AI models. Like Claire Silver is a favorite of mine. and I love Claire. A, a lot of people out there who do those sorts of things. But there's also this other side on digital art 
and the whole like using AI tools is kind of bad for artists because they've been trained on artists and all this sort of stuff. Where do you sit on that kind of world using AI and creating pieces of art? I'm a huge fan of AI as a tool to create art. I, I think that, um, you know, I think it's going to be kind of laughable, call it a decade from now, that we consider this to be something so weird and foreign and scary. But, you know, that's any any new kind of novel tech in some sense. Like, I remember there was an article when Photoshop came out and, and you could do like perfect circles. Like people were pissed. They're like, well... Well, well, you should draw your circles. And it's just like, it's like, is this another digital tool? The mm. true AI artists that are creating really compelling works are using a suite of different tools and they're using their imagination to blend together and create something that is unique that isn't just a one prompt output, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's where it gets really interesting when you have artists that are coming and training their own models of unique data sets to do things that you just can't find anywhere else. Pindar is another great one that has done so many great unique things, including, you know, training AI to use paintbrushes to actually paint the physical art. There's just a lot of really cool innovation that's happening here. And so I just see this as it's a reboot. It's a brand new version of Photoshop. It's Photoshop version 1.0 that's just hit the market and everyone's really confused. And to yeah. act like everyday life doesn't influence us, like people will say like, well, uh, if you use these type in a prompt, then it's just going to, it uses other people's works to like create that. It uses other people's works. I'm like, well, I get how you're saying that. And I do believe artists should have the right to say opt out. I don't want my data set included in this. And that's, that's totally fine. But in some sense, like, aren't we all using just other, this would be a horrible torture experiment, but like you're born, we slap on, um, uh, some, some, something just block out your eyesight. And we take that off after 18 years and we say, draw us a tree, right? You're not going to have that data set. You weren't trained on that data set. You have no clue what a tree looks like. So how could you ever, you've never seen any or other drawings or, or sketches, or you've never been to a museum. We're pulling upon rich data all the time and storing it in our mind to help us become better artists, right? And so to act like that doesn't exist is just like, it, it, it's silly to me. We're inspired by so many people. It reminds me of what when hip hop started, right? In some ways, like early hip hop was completely. Now, it's I know AI art is not a collage, and we've been through that a bunch, and we're not talking about the same sort of thing. But you were taking pieces of other things and putting them together, and that's a new entity, right? It's something new, and that is like part of what makes us human, right? And like in yes. a way that that like by limiting people and saying like, well, this was trained on all these all these other people's models. And again, we've we've said this on the show a thousand times. Like we do have to find some way to get compensation for people who got sucked up into this model that didn't get compensated but this is our collective experience and now it's just one more way to access it which is a really cool thing overall i feel like do you think we let me ask and let me push on that a little bit though do we really need to figure out how to compensate people uh on the art side for for because let's just pretend you know kev goes out and draws an amazing tree and it's like one of eight million trees that are in this index for how to create trees in ai and somebody goes out and makes a painting and sells it for, you know, a grand. Well, what should Kevin get? Like, like what should, like, it just seems silly to me to think about. Well, okay. I agree. If, if Kevin's tree is completely inconsequential, which sorry, Kevin, it probably would be. I'm not, I'm you. not trying to get, make it funny, but did you follow the whole mid journey story about when mid journey was trained on specific names of artists and how early in the gestation, it's very hard to understand how I say I'm a reasonably successful artist and I make 50 to a hundred thousand dollars a year or selling my art, which is a very successful artist. I don't know what percentage of the model, everything that comes out should be given to that person. It's an incredibly hard thing to figure out. And we're now at this place where it may be too late to do that. I do think the opt out part, which you mentioned is important, but then I think going forward, I'm still so confused and conflicted by this because I do sometimes worry people are going to be left behind who yes. are, are not uh, able to take something that they made and make it have value to them. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the maybe the answer is just like make new stuff and make value out of that, which I also believe is good. But it is a, it is a confusing thing, I think, for a lot. It's going to be hard it, to it look is. at a piece of generated art and say, well, that elbow was clearly my elbow style from my anime right. or manga or whatever. That would be difficult. I think that there's more clear cut and dry cases where if you use an artist's name and put it into a machine and get something out that is their style, it's obvious that they went into the data set, right? And if they weren't given a chance to opt out, I feel like these big companies either need to put guardrails that stop that infringement because they, they took 
40, 50, 60 years to develop that style that's associated with their name and now anybody can clone it. So I, I think there's going to be nuanced cases where the genie's out of the bottle and that's going to be that. But I think there have been, especially with the Mid Journey uh, example, there's times where clearly an artist's name their data set, their work was put into the machine. And I feel like you can reverse engineer that and make sure that either you don't get their exact output out, or if you're going to get their output out, they have to agree and maybe get a small royalty from it. Uh, Do you think yeah. we will see a, um, let's say an, uh, an artist friendly Spotify of generative art, if you will, where they lend their data sets to be trained? Or do you think at that point, it's not going to be as good because the data set's so much smaller that the bigger companies or the open source models that don't care and absorb it all, they're just going to win anyways. I think I think what we're going to see is we're going to see um, it, it's going to be a data war. Like one of the things that I, I was kind of throwing around our firm at the VC level was like, what if we didn't invest in companies? What if we just buy data? In, and, that's, I mean, that's what that's what record companies are doing, right? All the catalogs of people. Right. It's a version of that, right? Is what you're talking about. Yeah. And, and it's because yeah. it, I, I believe that where we're going uh, in the not too distant future is this idea of just being able to take um, data, both private and public, of certain personality types, quarantine that, train on it, and mm-hmm. do very interesting things with it, right? Like... Uh, for example, the philosopher Alan Watts. I know his son. I got to meet his son. Oh, a cool. super nice guy. Um, you can download a, he should probably take this off, but you can download um, all 500 hours of Alan Watts's talks in MP3 which format. Which are amazing. amazing. Those which are, are incredible amazing. too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But you can imagine, I can take that. I can throw it into model. And like, you know, one of the things I want to talk to him about is actually having Alan on my show. And like, there's yeah. a world where I just do a little green screen and I got Alan sitting next to me. And we're doing, you know, an interview. And so I, I just like, that's going to be so much fun. And you can imagine when Obama comes out with a new book, you can't have him on your podcast because it's Obama, but you can drop his book PDF in there and ask him a ton of questions, right? And the, the real-time nature of it, I think, is going to be ch- completely changed too. Like, I always think about, if you're listening to a podcast, and you're like, okay, you know, Tim Ferriss just mentioned ayahuasca for the first time. I've never heard about this. You Future podcast players, I should be able to say like, Hey, wait a second, Tim, tell me a little bit more about ayahuasca. What are you talking about? And then it branches off of the podcast, does an explainer in Tim's voice based on previous data that Tim has had, Mm -hmm. and then re-merges back into the show. You know, and it's like that world is absolutely coming. It's going to be so much fun. We just talked about a thing today where Andrew Huberman has created this thing with a company. You may know the company. It's called Dexa. And they're yeah. basically creating individual things where it's just a it's a personalized chatbot on his data and you can ask yeah. him specific stuff. But that's- yeah, he already did it on my pod- podcast. So he has all my historic podcasts done. And so it's going to be live up on, on uh, KevinRose.com here in the next like. I think a week or so. What a better way to transition to our last fun thing we're going to do with Kevin here. So Kev, as you know, listening on our show, we do a lot of weird stuff, especially with voice AIs, and we, we create AI co-hosts. Today, yes. we have created what we we call a pitch bot, and we have the ability to hear problems in your life, and our pitch bot is going to come up with a company that is going to solve it for you. So it's basically just any problem that you might be having in life. Okay, sounds good. I got one. Please. Okay, so my first one is that uh, living in LA, the summertime, you know, it gets a little warm and I wanna have a cold plunge like around the, around the clock, like available to me at any time, but I don't wanna spend like the 10 grand on one. So how could I actually build a cold plunge at home and have it ready whenever I want it? This is a perfect question for PitchBot. I can't wait to hear what PitchBot has to say. <laughs> okay, back to this. well, I can tell you we're going to do a little bit more censoring than I thought we were going to do on this episode, but it is almost done. <laughs> All right, listen up, mother. I've got the perfect solution for you and your sweaty sack. Introducing oh the chill the out AI powered cold plunge. Imagine oh, okay. this a sleek portable pod that fits right in your living room, backyard, or even your damn bedroom. This bad boy is packed with a state-of-the-art AI system that monitors the temperature and humidity levels in your area. It then adjusts the water temperature accordingly, ensuring that you always have the perfect icy dip, the chill the f*** out. AI cold plunge also comes with a built-in aromatherapy feature. Just add a few drops (laughs) of your favorite essential oil and this bitch will infuse the water with a calming, rejuvenating scent. 
that'll make you feel like a whole new person. Okay. Now, There's, I know right. what you're thinking. That sounds amazing, but I can't afford a $10,000 cold plunge. Yes. Don't worry, my friend. This bad boy is priced at a cool nine nine hundred and ninety nine. Just kidding. What? Oh, not that's it. <laughs> around here, the chill the f- out AI cold plunge will only set you back a measly okay. four hundred ninety nine ninety nine. Okay, and it's and flawed. Oh, now, AI nice. Is a complimentary bottle of Frosty Balls essential oil blend. Okay, we're oh, good. Oh, we're oh, good. Um, oh wow! I have no notes. Kev, how about you? Oh my God! I don't even know how much I'm getting charged. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Is it a thing you put around your body? Is that no. what we're dealing with here? I mean, it can, apparently it will chill your. <laughs> that much I got out of it, but I don't know much more. And it uses that was, AI. That's all you need to know. That, by the way, that's, that's not right. a pitch bot. That is my replica girlfriend. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> well, that might be a one and done. I don't think we need to do another pitch, do we? I, I think that's pretty good sense of what. I, look, please feel feel free. Another, this is if just you've got for you. Something, yeah, Kev, we, this is the one and done for this pod. No one else will get to play. <laughs> yeah, with. I mean, this 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 one seems like it's really aggressive. So mm-hmm. I'm gonna try and like make it relax a little bit, and okay. let's find oh. it. See if we can find its inner zen here. Okay, oh, I like that. Okay. Yeah. So what I would like to pitch it is saying that, you know. I'm ha- I'm really stressed out at work, and I would like to find time to meditate, um, but I don't want to use my phone. And I was wondering if there's any other natural, peaceful reminders that it might suggest uh, to remind me to have to take a moment for myself. Oh, that's really nice. <laughs> I'm really curious to see how this is going to turn out. Well, it was out. so aggressive. Oh, I feel yeah. like we we need to relax it a little bit. Hopefully, this will yeah. chill it out a little bit because that was. It's pretty hardcore. All right, my stressed out friend, let me introduce you to the Zen the fuck out AI powered <laughs> meditation bell. Imagine this, a beautifully crafted handmade bell that uses advanced AI technology mm-hmm. to sense your stress levels. Oh. When it detects that you're about to lose your <laughs> this bad boy will ring like a mother <laughs> reminding you to take a moment for yourself and find your inner peace. Okay. But wait, there's mm. more. No, there's... there's the wait, hold the f- out AI meditation bell also comes with a built-in aromatherapy feature. <laughs> Just add a few drops of your favorite essential oil, and this bitch will infuse the air around you with a calming, rejuvenating yeah. scent that'll help you find your zen. Yeah, and you can put the Frosty Balls essential oil in there from your cold plunge. I gotta like. say... I see a series of upgrades here when you're at che- when you're, check- when you're checking out yes. for your your plunge. And you just go with aromatherapy. There's just, some good trademarks there to be filed for sure. Yeah. Um, so AI might have a little ways to go still. Let's just be clear; <laughs> it's, not, it's not all the way there yet. But yeah. we ha- we can at least have fun with it, which is a good. Yeah, thing. that's amazing. Well, uh, Kev, where can people find you online? Where where should people seek you out? My new podcast is starting up next month, which is gonna be a lot of fun. Um, I'm not. It's not AI all the time, but there's certainly gonna be. I want to have you guys on. There's going to be, uh, you know, cover like every fifth episode or so or six, we'll, we'll cover something AI related. It's going to be everything from health and wellness hacks, productivity, more kind of geared towards people that are into lifelong learning, as I know, you know, we all are. So kevinrose.com to tune in for all of that, which will be great. That's awesome. I can't wait. Um, well, thanks um, so much for being here. Yeah, we really you, appreciate it. This is fun. Oh, yeah. this is so much fun, guys. I love it. We got to do it. We got to have you on my show. Let's do that next. 100%. We'll do that next. We'll bring we'll bring we'll bring Pitchbot back in a different yeah, form. Let's put it that exactly. way. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, bring a little vial of frosty balls and we'll break some bread. But thank yeah. you again, man. Congrats on the new studio and the pod and I'm looking forward to seeing you. Oh, thanks you. everyone. Thanks guys. Appreciate Bye, Kev. it. All right, take care, man. Yeah. Okay, everybody, thank you for joining us this week. We all we do this every week, and we appreciate you listening. And as always, please share the podcast, like, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. As always, we do at the end of the show. And last week, we did a little too long because I think it messed our YouTube algorithm up slightly. We yeah. spent a long time doing this, but we also yeah. got three more five-star reviews this week. So we are going to read them now. We will always read our five-star reviews no matter what. And we really appreciate everybody that takes their time to go out of their way to write a five-star review. We're not asking for a dollar. We may in the future if you have a dollar to (laughs) give. But for right now, your social currency, that time that you take to engage with us as comments, as liking, subscribing, and then of course, as sharing, as telling your friends, telling your family, making a Reddit post, that truly pays such huge dividends for us. So thank you. Thank you, thank you. And now, 
Neural Looney on Wednesday, Gavin yeah. wrote, who is making AI fun? Which it had an we exclamation are, point. We are. So it's, 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 it wasn't a question. <laughs> yeah. The podcast is a must for anyone who wants to stay tuned to the latest developments in AI, but delivered by smart, fun, entertaining guys. Hey, that's us. That really know their stuff. Cheers. And then Curve Man. Also, the next one up, very informative and fun. And this is by AKA Woody. I've always been a Kevin fan. Of course, they got to come out there and say that, don't they? I always enjoy the depth of AI that Gavin and Kevin go into while keeping it entertaining. Thank you, AKA Woody. We appreciate that. God, they always have to say that they like you, Kevin. No one cares about your face. (laughs) Cover it up. The last five-star review we got on Apple Podcasts, Gavin, was by Rooks Templar. Title is Great Hosts. I'm liking this already. The body says, I was drunk. <laughs> the good start. I was drunk and had a dream about a giant Nintendo controller from the days of old. We did that. We did do that. Mm-hmm. So glad I dived down this 3 a.m. nostalgic rabbit hole and found me some sweet KP at the bottom. Love the show. It's got me saying please and thank you to AI. Love you, since Arena. Peace. Were you were you breaking up there? Did that touch you so deeply that you started to tear up a little? Yeah, either that or was the soda carbonation causing a little burp, and I uh, got through it. But I'm, let's round it up to me getting emotional, Gavin. Let's do that. That was so nice of him. Thank you, everybody, for doing that. We really appreciate all those reviews. And again, we have fun doing this. We do it on a regular basis. It is it is something we are going to do for a while because the world of AI keeps changing. But come back next week. We've got some fun stuff going on. Our friend Joanna Stern, who had a Apple Vision Pro review, went viral, is going to be on as our guest and all sorts of other fun stuff, I'm sure. Thank you, Gavin. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. 